Welcome to the tutorial on microcontroller peripherals and interfacing. This is facilitator Swarupa and today's topic is 8051 architecture. So before we begin, let us start from the basic. So what actually is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a small integrated chip that has a complete system inside the chip to perform various operations. In modern technology, we can call it the SOC, that is system on chip. A microcontroller can also be called as a microcomputer. So just like a computer, it can perform different operations. A microcontroller is used in many devices. You can see them around you every time. Like you have those in smartphones, washing machines, automobiles and much more. So you might also have heard the term microprocessor. So what is the basic difference between microcontroller and a microprocessor? So as you can see here, a microprocessor consists only of the CPU whereas a microcontroller has CPU plus some extra devices like it has a memory, ADCs, analog to digital converters, timers and much more. So as the microprocessor has only a CPU, uh, to build a system we need to connect extra peripherals so the system becomes bulkier. Whereas in a microcontroller, as everything is inside the microcontroller, we do not need to add many extra things to the microcontroller. So the microcontroller is a compact device. Then a microprocessor is expensive, whereas a microcontroller is cheap. So places where we need to uh, consider space and cost as crucial factors, we can use a microcontroller. Now, since the microprocessor performs only one specific task of processing, it has a high speed, whereas a microcontroller has a very low speed as compared to the microprocessor. The power consumption of a microprocessor is high, whereas the power consumption of microcontroller is low. Now, where do we use a microprocessor and what is the application of a microcontroller? So places where we need to do general purpose computing. Uh, like computers use a microprocessor and the devices in which we need to perform a specific task for example in a washing machine the task is specified that we want to wash the clothes so in such specialized devices or appliances we will use a microcontroller so as we saw in general that a microcontroller has many peripherals connected to it so what let us see in detail what actually are those peripherals and from the diagram you can see here this is the microprocessor plus these things and it makes up a microcontroller so we can say that a microprocessor is a component of a microcontroller now let us move to the block diagram of 8051 microcontroller there are many types of microcontrollers 8051 is a very common and widely used microcontroller so let us see the block diagram one by one so here you can see we have a ROM so when we use a microcontroller how do we use it what we do is we write a program in uh, languages such as C, C++ or assembly language program the program is compiled by a compiler now to compile and convert the program into a machine readable form or to create a hex file we need an integrated development environment for the 8051 we have the Kyle software to do that then when the hex file of that program is created we need to burn the program in the microcontroller so uh, software such as Flash magic is used for burning the program in the microcontroller. So the program gets stored in the memory of the microcontroller. So the place where this program is loaded is called the flash memory or also known as the ROM. That is read only memory. We can only read operations in that. We cannot edit or we cannot write anything in the ROM. So the size of the ROM in a 8051 microcontroller is 4 kilobytes. So it can also be called as a program memory as we store the program in the ROM. Now uh, as we perform the operations we need to store some data also. 
So to store this data, we have this random access memory. Uh, now the size of random access memory in 8051 is 128 bytes. Here you can see two timers. They are two 16-bit timers. Timer 0 and timer 1. Timers are used to for the timing and counting operations in the 8051. Uh, we will see those in detail afterwards. Now uh, a microcontroller needs to be connected to the external devices, say your computer. So to uh, facilitate the communication between a microcontroller and some external device, we have a serial port. Now serial port has a reception and a transmission pin, as you can see here, TXD and RXD, which is used to provide a communication between microcontroller and other devices. Now here we have four input output ports, namely P0, P1, P2, P3. Each port is made up of eight pins. So in all we have 32 input output pins in a microcontroller. Now, so in a microcontroller we need to transfer the data from one place to another. When we want to perform certain operations we need to carry the data from say the memory to the CPU or to the input output ports. So to do this we have the bus control. Now uh, there are three types of buses in a bus control. First is the address bus. Now what is the address bus? Address bus is a group of wires or lines that are used to transfer the address of the memory or the input output devices. Now what do we mean by address? Like the location where the data is stored it can be said as the address. Now it is a unidirectional line. So in Intel 8051 the address bus is of 16 bits. Second one is the data bus. As the name suggests it is used to transfer data within the microcontroller and memory input output devices. It is bidirectional since it requires to send or receive the data. Then the third type of bus is the control bus. Uh, bus to process data to tell what to do with the selected memory location. Like some control signals are read, written or we fetch the opcode. So the control bus tells us what to do with that data. Now in all digital circuits, you know that we need to provide a clock to the circuit. So oscillator is a circuit which provides a clock we connect a crystal to the oscillator pins which are named as XTEL1 uh, and XTEL2. Then here we have the interrupt control. Now what is an interrupt control? Uh, consider you are doing some work and suddenly you realize that you needed to complete some other work. So what you do is you stop the execution or you interrupt the current work and you complete what was necessary and then you again come back to the original work. So similarly here interrupt control is used to perform some code which is or we can say that the interrupt control stops the execution of the current program runs the ISR. Now what is an ISR? ISR is an interrupt service routine and then again it comes back to the original program. Now coming to the main block central processing unit. The central processing unit consists of the ALU that is arithmetic and logic unit. Then it has various registers to hold the data. Now uh, we say that 8051 is a 8 bit microcontroller. So what do we mean by 8 bit microcontroller? It means that the ALU can handle at most 8 bits at one time. So therefore we say that CPU is a 8 bit microcontroller. We, we also have many uh, other uh, microcontrollers which can differ like we have 16 bit, 32 bit and so on. Now let us move to the architecture of 8051. 
What do we mean by architecture? Whenever we want, want to build a house, we decide that uh, we want to have a dining room, a kitchen, a hall, etc. So similarly, in 8051, we have two types of architectures. Now, those architectures are the Harvard architecture and the von Neumann architecture. What is the difference between these two architectures? In a Harvard architecture, we have two separate memories. One is a program memory or ROM as we saw and one is the data memory or RAM. So, whereas in von Neumann architecture, we only have a single block in which both memory resides. So, as you can see here, in Harvard architecture, we need two different sets of buses to connect each memory. We need one address bus and data bus for the program memory and similarly for the data memory. So, in Harvard architecture, we need more hardware. Whereas, in von Neumann architecture, we need to have only one set of bus, address bus and data bus. The same can be used to access data from the ROM or the RAM. So, here we we'll require less amount of hardware. So, because we have two different memories in Harvard architecture, it occupies more space. Von Neumann architecture occupies less space. Now, coming to the speed. Since we have two different memories for performing those actions like for reading the memory and for the random access memory, we have two different sets of memories. So, the processing becomes fast in Harvard architecture. Whereas in von Neumann architecture, it becomes a little slower. In Harvard architecture, we cannot use the ROM as RAM or the RAM as ROM since they are two separate units. But for the ROM and RAM, we can adjust the space used for the program and data. So, there is a good space utilization in a one Neumann architecture of 8051.